So now finally everyone is here, seven, and uh, we can start. Um, so in the previous class, we finished um, discussing canonical transformations. So now we know how we can go from uh, one nice world to a different nice world, um, from canonical set of coordinates to a new um, set of canonical coordinates in an attempt to simplify our life in terms of solving problems, right? And now, um, and you remember at the beginning of the previous chapter, I gave you sort of like a, I have a dream speech, right, about the uh, place which can be the nicest in terms of solution. But now uh, it's time to find the best possible place with the largest number of benefits, right? So with, uh, with a place where you can go and solution will be really for free, right? Uh, and again, sort of like a um, ultimate simplification. We're searching for the place uh, with ultimate simplifications, right? And uh, so where, what, that can, where, what can that be? Uh, the place where new Hamiltonian is zero. What can be better than that? Hamiltonian, new Camel, okay, now we can call it Camiltonian, right? Is zero. Then of course, uh, it still will be, uh, we, we will still will be, we will still be in a nice place and uh, coordinates are still canonical. So we can still use Hamilton's equations and you can easily imagine if Camil Hamiltonian is zero, then uh, your generalized momentum uh, P capital in the new world will be constant and generalized coordinate will be also constant. Basically, you go to the place and both of your solutions are constants. What can be better than that, right? So let's develop this approach. And of course, um, the question is how can you get to that nice, the niciest place, right? Where the grass is the greenest and the sun is the shiniest, right, basically. Okay, so now... Uh, we still want to have canonical transformations as usual. We don't want to end up in some shady place, right? So we still go from, uh, let's say this way, so from old QI, uh, PI to the uh, new uh, Q capitals, uh, P capitals, right? So canonical transformation. Transformation, right? And, uh, of course, uh, we know how to handle the oh, conservation of brackets violated, right? And we know what happens uh, with uh, Hamiltonians. So if we have uh, H Hamiltonian in the, new, in the old world, then the new world, uh, Hamiltonian in the new world can be found by taking the old one and plus uh, partial derivative uh, of the generating function right partial derivative over a uh, generating function right so basically a generating function generates transformation uh, which leads you to the to a new uh, world okay so and as i said as i told you the ultimate simplification okay so i can say we we want uh to find or to choose a generating function because every time we will have to go through the generating function in order to end up in a nice place, right? In a nice place. And on top of that, we want to have Hamiltonian to be zero, right? So we want to uh, choose F generating function, right? Um, so that, okay, which way I wrote it? So that, so that, um, k equals to zero, so that uh, k equals to zero. And let me write down ultimate simplification, ultimate simplifications. So it basically means we cannot do any better. This is the best place, All right? Okay, so now if we want this, uh, Hamiltonian equals to uh, zero, right? So now uh, let's 
uh, look what will be the solution in that world. Right. Okay, maybe I will write it here, right, underneath uh, here. So as a result, it's still a uh, world of canonical coordinates, so we can use our Hamilton's equations. Uh, so the first one, qi uh, dot equals to partial derivative of, oi, not h, k. Uh, k with respect to uh, pi, and since k equals zero, right, since this is zero, uh, we can write immediately so, the derivative is zero, and our uh, generalized coordinate in a new world will be constant. We can go to that place and we can tell, even before going to that place, we can, we can tell immediately, okay, the generalized coordinate will be constant. And the second transformation, oh, the second uh, Hamilton's equation, pi dot equals to minus partial derivative of k with respect to uh, qi, and again, it will be zero since Hamiltonian is zero. And again, the same story, I can say, or okay, we can say <laughs> that uh, generalized momentum also constant. Of course, it will be a different constant, but constant, right? So this is the best place. So you go there and you don't need to uh, search for a solution, constant. So pretty much uh, solving problem will be not actually in solving the problem. It will be all in traveling from the old world to the new world and then going back, right? Um, but, but it doesn't mean that uh, it, sometimes it can simplify it because traveling can be challenging, right? It's not just to buy a ticket on the plane and fly, right, in comfortable conditions. Sometimes it can be challenging, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, so, and uh, so pretty much the whole uh, story is in this equation. So since we want k equals to be zero, so we have to deal with with that. So let me write that explicitly. All right. All right. Um, let me write so we have to deal with uh, this equation. Basically, Camille, equation for the Hamiltonian, right? So uh, H Hamiltonian, which is a function of uh, Q1 all the way to Qn, then uh, P1 and all the way to uh, Pn possible time dependence, so it's just H, plus partial derivative of F with respect to T equals to zero. So pretty much uh, this will be our major equation. But for now, it's not ready to be declared as the uh, Hamilton-Jacobi equation. It's too early. First of all, uh, we need to decide which generating function should we use. You remember we had four, oh, four, four of them, right? F1, F2, F3, F4. And of course, any of those functions can be, functions can be used, right? Of course, uh, with some of them, uh, the, uh, it will be easier, slightly easier to find the transformation equations with some, it can, the process can be slightly more complicated. But again, you can use any of them to generate uh, transformation equations. And the, uh, the transformation equations which you want, which you need. So at this point, pretty much the slightest breeze, breeze of the air uh, can convince you to choose to use a certain uh, generating function. In this case, in this case, the most convenient is the function f2, generating function of the second type. I will uh, tell you maybe in like 10 minutes why that function is slightly better than uh, the other functions. So the most convenient function f2. So which way I wrote it? Um, okay. Two, two, two. Let me write. So, which f, and I will write the most convenient, the most convenient 
is uh, f2, which is the function, you remember, uh, q small, p capital, and time dependence. q small, p capital, and time dependence. So the most convenient function. And of course, you remember the, the equations which we derived, uh, which goes with this, equa with this function. Of course, those, if you satisfy those equations, if you can get uh, transformation equations out of those equations, it, yeah, it's, it, it gives us uh, canonical transformations. So, and my personal why um, I like function f2, sort of, uh, because the equations which I'm going to write, right, they're both with pluses. So I don't have to remember which equation with plus, which is equation with minus, right? You remember that uh, problem um, about those equations. So um, let me write the first one. It's a partial derivative. Should I? Yeah. Uh, partial derivative of f2 with respect to the first uh, independent uh, coordinate, which is q, and it is equal to the uh, canonically uh, conjugate quantity, right? It's the first equation and the second equation, uh, partial derivative of that function with respect to the second uh, independent coordinate, and it is equal to the canonically conjugate quantity, right? So these two equations, right? Which can give us uh, transformation equations. So for now, let's grab the first equation Okay, equations, actually, there are several equations, right? The first set of equations, these, these guys, and shoved it into our equations, which is sort of like a, uh, the major equation around which we have to dance all the time, right? So, okay, instead of all these p's, we're going to replace them with these partial derivatives, df over dq. And of course, here there will be also f2. Then, now, basically, uh, that's uh, what we need. But now some uh, cosmetic transformations. Look, function f2, great, nothing wrong with that. But you know what? Uh, there are four generating functions, f1, f2, f3, f4. And if we take uh, one of them, it feels like mass-produced functions. It doesn't sound cool, doesn't sound very impressive, right? Uh, and also quite often this Hamilton-Jacobi theory is presented as independent uh, formalism. So Newtonian formalism, Lagrangian, Hamiltonian and Hamilton-Jacobi theory, right? Since it's so, it's, since it is so important, it makes sense to uh, rebrand rename this function f2 and give it a cool name, different symbol, so that it wouldn't sound like being mass produced, right? It's sort of like a, for example, right, a Toyota, right? Mass, it's a car for mass, for regular people, for commoners, right? I drive a Toyota, right? But if you want to feel cool, right, important, right? Yeah, Toyota produced Lexuses. Okay, buy that. It's basically still the same Toyota, right? But with some additional uh, bells and whistles, right? Yeah, it's, now it's a cool brand, right? For cool people. So basically here it's the same, right? These are F1, F2, F3. These are Toyotas, right? And now for this special situation, right? Let's introduce the cool name. And instead of F2, let's use S and call it Hamilton's principal function. But in nature, it's still the same Toyota. Lexus is still the same Toyota, right? It doesn't mean that I don't like Toyotas. I drive them. I like Lexus, right? All right. It's just not after 2014 when they, they got a new CEO and now the, their new design. I cannot stand this. this those gigantic grills. I, I just, whenever I see them, it terrifies me. That's why I still I drive my old Toyota, right? I want to get new, but I cannot stand the new one. <laughs> so I'm waiting when that new trend will be over, trend in a design. Okay, back to this stuff, right? So let's rebrand it. Let's give it a cool name. So, uh, which way? Um, okay, probably I should uh, give this justification. Since, um, since uh, Hamilton-Jacobi theory uh, is presented 
is presented as an independent formalism or separate formalism as a separate formalism right uh, so let's rename so let's rename but again nature is still the same it's still a generating function so let's rename f2, which is a function of q, p, capital N, t, uh, into s, which is, of course, still the same uh, function of q, small p, capital N, t, and call it Hamilton's principal function. Uh, principal function. Okay, so let me, uh, it's worth of framing, all right, Hamilton's principal function. And now, so of course we will have pi ds over dq, q will be ds over dp, and this first equation will be shoved into this, into this equation, and this equation now with these transformations, with this replacement, uh, we can call hamilton jacobi equation so let me rewrite it all right sort of in the final form all right h hamiltonian which is a function of all q's then uh, instead of p's we have these partial derivatives ds over dq1 and all the way to partial derivative of the hamilton's principal function with respect to qn possible time dependence and plus partial derivative of principal function with respect to t equals to zero. That's what is called Hamilton's Jacob, Hamilton Jacobi equation. Of course, this should be framed with red because that's the, the equation, not a, a, an equation. This is the equation. Hamilton Jacobi equation. Hamilton Jacobi equation and so we need to understand uh, what is this and what what are the solutions because now sometimes it's difficult to see what is the solution of the equation first of all it's a first order differential equation on the first order but with n plus one variables first order differential equation with n plus one variables, right? And uh, what is the solution? Solution is a function, S, which will be a function, of course, the, all these, uh, function of all these Qs and possible time dependent, right? And of course, since we, we will have to integrate it, uh, how many times? n plus one. For each of these uh, derivatives, we'll, for each of these derivatives, we will have to perform integration. For this, for that, for that. As, as a result, we are going to end up with n plus one constants of integration. Although it's still first order differential equation, but because there are so many derivatives, we will have to integrate it, of course, n plus one times. Okay, so let me write it down. So it's some um, first order differential differ, differential equation first order okay partial differential equation partial differential equation with n plus one variables and of course solution is s and of course solution of this equation is our hamilton Oh, yeah, Hamilton's principal function. Hamilton's principal function, S. Right? Basically, we want to find the function S, which will give us a transformation equations. If you use those transformation equations, you will end up in the world where Hamiltonian equals zero and with this gift-wrapped solution. That's the story. Right? Okay, so the solution is, uh, uh, the idea is to find this 
Hamilton's principal function. So let me write down. So it will be a function of uh, at the end after solving. So it will be q1 all the way to qn, a possible time dependence. I will write it underneath. Okay, uh, uh, at the end. Then, as I said, we're going to generate n plus 1 constants of integrations. Integration uh, alpha 1 all the way to alpha n plus 1 and possible time dependence. So that's the solution. Again, with this generating function, you can get transformation equations and you will end up in the world where Hamiltonian equals to zero and you can get immediately these uh, <coughs> uh, solutions. And then, of course, you will have to go back. But you know what? At this point, you should start screaming at me, right? Because, um, no, raise questions. Because we used only one equation, right? But in order to guarantee that you will end up uh, uh, doing canonical transformations, you have to satisfy both of them. But for now, we use only one. The second equation will be used on the way back. When, you start, when we start traveling uh, from the uh, new world back to the old world, right? <clears throat> Bringing the solution back, right? Okay, so now let me um, talk, uh, say a few words about this constants of integration. Uh, simplify, let me check if I mention everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's only one thing. Hamilton's is everywhere, basically. You see Hamiltonian formalism, Hamiltonian function, Hamilton's equations. Now we introduce Hamilton's principal function. In 10 minutes, we will introduce Hamilton. Uh, okay, I even, I even forgot, right? Uh, ah, characteristic function. The Hamilton is almost everywhere, right? You know what? At some point, I started feeling it's sort of, I started getting a feeling that it's sort of like a, uh, the cult of Hamilton. You know, in the Soviet Union, there was a cult of Stalin. Now here, a cult of uh, Hamilton, right? It's everywhere Hamilton. It doesn't matter where you turn, right? Really such a, such a strong feeling. <clears throat> like a guy obsessed with his name. <laughs> like I used to have a friend he, um in programming, used a sub, a sub program, sub VIs, and he used to use his names to name them, right? John 1, John 2, John 3, and so on. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now uh, back to these uh, constants. Look, this is the whole set, the complete set of all possible constants. Right? And look, since, so uh, in which form or um, one of these constant should enter into uh, this function? One of those constants must be additive. Why? Because look at the structure of the equation. S function enter and enters in this equation only in the form of these derivatives. There is no S explicitly present somewhere without a derivative, right? So only through the derivatives it enters into this equation. So it means that one of these constants, because again, it's a complete set, it's all possible constants. So it means that one of these constant, constants must be additive. Right? So it will be here somewhere we can add plus, for example, alpha n plus 1. But if you have an additive constant, should we keep it? Look, what are we going to do with s after this? We have to go here to these equations to get transformation equations. And again, we, have, we will have to differentiate that S with respect to this Q and P. So that additive constant will disappear anyway. It will, uh, yeah, it will disappear. So there is no point of keeping one of these constants uh, in, our, uh, in our function. Again, it's not wrong if you keep it. It's just a waste of, waste of effort. Because anyway, it will disappear at, uh, at this point. It's not going to change anything, right? So one of these constants will be dropped. So as a result, we will have to deal with n constants of integration. Okay, let me uh, write something about this. 
and um, so which we wrote, which I wrote wrote it um, since. Okay. Since S that function. Um, okay. Since we only have uh, S in the form of a derivative, in the form of uh, derivatives. one of constants, one of uh, constants must be additive. Right. And can be dropped. Must be additive and can be dropped. Of course, it doesn't it doesn't mean that it must be dropped. It can be dropped. Right. Because anyway, it will disappear at this stage of the uh, solution. So let's say alpha n plus 1 will be dropped. Okay, so as a result, I can um, uh, rewrite my uh, Hamilton's principal function with... Uh, n constants of integration. Okay. Okay, usually I put dot and comma between different sets, sets of um, variables. Now, the trickiest part. <clears throat> okay, so S function, it's a function Q, P, and T. That's what we're getting, right? So, again, let me remind. So, um, which way I wrote it? Uh, we want, basically, we search function S. Uh, for We want to get S, which is a function of Q, I's, right? Uh, then P. Yeah, P capital. Yeah, yeah, P capital. Why I'm doubting myself, right? Uh, P capital and T. So that's what we want, right? Eventually. That's what we get from the equation, from the Hamilton equation. We assume that we can, we solved it, right? And that's what we want to get eventually, right? And what else do we know about, about this function, about these variables P, P capital? Basically, these are generalized momenta in the new world. With this S, Hamiltonian will be zero, and our generalized momenta are constant. It will be, uh, of course, uh, after integration, it's, a, it's just a set of arbitrary constants. Set of arbitrary constants. Set of n arbitrary constants. Right? And so now, look. Uh, it feels like, okay... Uh, it makes sense. It makes sense to uh, recycle. So here we will have to uh, f we will have to introduce n arbitrary constants to uh, get the solution, right? We will have to. So why not? What if we use these constants here when solve when we solve this equation? We already generated n arbitrary constants. And here, at this point, we will need n arbitrary constants to uh, introduce P capital, right? Why not? Let's use this constant as our P, P capital. Recycle constants, right? Recycling. Now it's popular, right? Save the world from a new uh, number of constants, right? So this kind of sketchy, but again, why not? It's a uh, arbitrary constant. Here we also have arbitrary constants. Yes, let's re let's reuse them. Let's recycle them, because we already we will have them already uh, after getting this solution, right? 
And of course, it's not the only choice. If you don't like these options, you can introduce different constants. It's up to you, right? I saw some, some books, they even said that it's possible sometimes more convenient uh, to introduce a linear, to use a linear combination of these constants to introduce P, right? But the easiest, kind of the obvious uh, choice, recycle those, lambda, uh, those alphas, right? Okay, so this is probably the uh, most, um, the sketchiest place, or right? the, uh, but again, it's not, not wrong. Again, arbitrary constants, arbitrary constant. The key word arbitrary. You can use any constants. All right, okay, so. Uh, okay, so we want this, and uh, we also know, and we also know that uh, all uh, P's uh, will be constants, will be constants. Again, I will emphasize arbitrary constants. So let's use, let's recycle. So let's recycle. Okay, probably I should put codes. Recycle our alpha eyes. Wait, not alpha. Those, oh yeah, alpha. Damn it. I thought lambdas. No, alphas, of course, right? Let's recycle our alpha eyes, right? Uh, and Uh, take them as uh, P, P i's. So I can write that uh, P i's equals to alpha i's, right? Okay, so now uh, we Again, we assume that we solved Hamilton Jacobi equation, so we have that function, right? And uh, now, of course, you can guarantee that in the new world, Hamiltonian is zero. And of course, as a result, we can write down the solution. Solution in the new world, of course, right? So now, uh, with this S, right, which we wrote it, <coughs> uh, K, equals to zero with this s we know we can be confident that you end up in the world where k equals to zero and of course these solutions solutions yeah probably i will rewrite one more time quickly so q dot i equals to partial derivative of k with respect to uh, p i equals to zero so of course Qi equals to a constant. Uh, let's call it betas, for example. Since we use alphas for p, let's use betas here, right? So beta i, and of course these are constants, right? And of course the second uh, Hamilton's equation. Who is minus, right, in front? Anyway, it's still zero, and of course, uh, p i will be equal again constants, and we recycle all our alphas now. Use this fact: alpha i, and again, that's constant. So these are solutions in the new world. Right, pretty much we don't have to solve this. They are over there waiting basically for us to be picked up, right? And so now once we have solution in the new world, in the, in the new world, of course, now we need to go back, right? It's like some people who work in foreign countries in a different country, right? so you just need to go there. It's much easier to get money, to get solutions over there. But there, at the end of the day, your family, since your family still lives, in your country, so they have to go back, right, to, to, to do it, right. So now we're doing something similar, right. Uh, and so now going back, right, 
let's go back. So now it's time to go back. So time to go back home, right? Driving home for Christmas, right? Like in that song. <laughs> All right. Um, and now, again, you still remember, we haven't used this equation. We have to satisfy this equation, otherwise we wouldn't be able, uh, we wouldn't be able to um, guarantee that you were in a nice place, right? So now, only now, on the way back, we will satisfy this equation. So strictly speaking, since we haven't satisfied this equation up to this point, I've, I wouldn't be uncomfortable to tell that I know exactly where I was. <laughs> because the second equation will be satisfied only now. You see how sketchy everything is, right? But still, since we will, it will be satisfied eventually, right? So everything will be adjusted, right? So you will end up with an, in a nice place. Okay, so now, uh, now we uh, must, now not have, we must satisfy the second equation, satisfy the second equation. Satisfy the second uh, equation, which is this, right? So on the way back, so uh, qi equals to partial derivative, and of course it's a S, we remember, rebranding, renaming, so now ds over d, okay, I need to write, so S depends on Q, uh, P and T, and with respect to uh, P, I. <laughs> of course, P, I's are constant, I can uh, maybe, uh, let me replace P's with al alphas. So it will be partial derivative of S, which is a function of Q alpha I alpha, alpha I uh, T and with respect to alpha I. And so now, of course, we don't know, we don't have explicit uh, structure of S. So, but anyway, look, after uh, differentiating, right, properly, then what you will have? You will have Q, here we have Q uh, capital, right, and Q capital is what? Beta constant, beta I, right, so we have only Q present and then constant and constants. Of course, after differentiating with respect to alpha, you will still have those constants alphas, right? So what do you have to do now in order to get back to the old world? Invert this equation and write it in terms of Q small. Of course, it will be Q small function of uh, alphas, betas, and time. So basically now it's just an inversion. It's just algebraic, uh, sim okay, not simple, but algebraic operation, uh, uh, procedure, algebraic procedure. So now you just need to uh, invert it, invert, oh, turn this equation inside out, and you will get immediately how coordinates in the old world depends on time. And we have uh, all necessary constants of integration to n. So it will be uh, qi which is the function of, you know what, yeah, I think I should be able to fit over here, alpha i, beta i, and t. So now, yeah, after this, we will, we satisfied the second equation as well, so it means that we were, we were in a nice place, All right, not in some shady. And so now I can sort of justify the advantage of using function f2 in all these uh, formalism in this procedure. And that smallest argument which uh, convinced people to use function f2, it's here. Because in this first step, on the way back, by simple, okay, simple differentiation and then simple inversion, you can get immediately the uh, evolution of the system. You can see uh, how coordinates 
changes with time. And of course, constants of integrations, those are basically initial condition. So because of this step, function of true was uh, chosen. Because immediately you will get uh, what happens with position of the system. And that's what most of the time you want to know. Right? Of course, you still, if you're still interested in uh, momenta, if in generalized momenta, yeah, we still have the second equation. So we can uh, apply it, invert it, and get how P depends on uh, time and uh, constants of integration, right? <laughs> and uh, another thing, of course, I will write, uh, I will apply the second equation. Uh, constants of integration, right? of which we will find, okay, if you need, if you want, right, uh, which can be found using initial conditions, right? And where did we get this constants? In the new world. So it means what? Where did we go? We went <laughs> to the world of initial conditions. Right? <laughs> it's amazing, right? This, right, traveling back, uh, back and forth in time, right? Um, so first you went back, back to the past, right, uh, to the world of initial conditions, and then back to the future. Uh, yeah, sort of like a back, yeah, like the, in that movie, Back to the Future, traveling back and forth, right? Let's go back to the future. Oh, no, Doc, you, what, you mean back to the... <laughs> I, I, I forgot already, the, I haven't watched it for a year. <clears throat> right. Okay, so... Um, the uh, yeah, second transformation equation. So let's 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 look at that. So now it's a p small. P small. And you know what? What mesmerizes me every time when I get to this uh, part, to these points, right? It's all was it all of this was done in, I think it according to its uh, book 1834, basically beginning of two, 19th century. What was the driving force to develop all these crazy theories, right? They were just riding horses, right? Uh, most of the world was just farmers, right? Uh, killing each other with, I don't know, with the uh, arches, right? What was the driving force? Okay, I understand, for example, why uh, what uh, UMass Lowell originally was created, because there were textile mills, right? They needed workers, right? Qualified workers. They didn't want to waste the time of uh, engineers and workers uh, uh, to educate some young generation. So they sent a bunch of retirees, right, to a separate place and told them, okay, educate these guys and then they will come to us. So because there was a driving force, textile industry. Then, of course, when textile industry died, university started broadening the horizons and it was and they changed the name. So it was no longer a Lowell Textile Institute. They renamed it to the university, right? But what was the driving force behind this? Every time when I get to this point, uh, it, it blows up my mind, right? Like something is... <laughs> but anyway, fascinating, fascinating, really, right? And there was a, no NSF which would give you money, okay, do and do, go and uh, do something, right? They were lucky if the king would decide to give some, 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 something, right? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, anyway, all right, so <laughs> finally let me um, apply the last, this uh, equation. So it will be partial derivative of S, which is the function of uh, Q, uh, P, and time, right? And with respect to Q, I, right? right? Of course, instead of P, uh, maybe I, okay, I should write probably, no, uh, let me write the next step. A partial derivative of S, of course, Q is nothing can be done. Instead of P's, we can introduce our alphas. And in order to get how P, that's what we want, that's our old world parameter, right? As a function of T, we just need to get rid of this Q. So after you differentiate with respect to Q, after differentiation, you will grab this, which you got from the previous step, and replace 
those cues. So as a result, you will get how P depends on time. But of course, after differentiating it. So now, and as a result, you will end up with a what? Uh, Pi will be a function of uh, these constants of integration and time dependence. So we are back with the solution. Again, you see, basically, we didn't solve the problem. We just traveled struggling, suffering, right? Great, as I said, it looks elegant, great, everything is so beautiful, right? But, but, it cannot be like that, right? There must be somewhere big, big troubles. And the troubles are in how can you solve this crazy differential equation? First order differential equation with n plus 1 variables. And in general, Solving this uh, hamilton jacobi equation uh, can do some irreversible damage to your brain, really. It's really, really uh, complicated, right? It can be really, right? Unless, unless you can separate variables. Only in that case, this, uh, this equation can be solved. Otherwise, probably it's easier to stay in the old world and solve the problems in the old world instead of uh, trying to solve this hamilton jacobi equation so sometimes of course it can be ridiculously complicated but sometimes it actually it can it can help right okay so uh let's um discuss all possible situations uh in an attempt to separate variables so let's uh, let's look at the case uh and of course all our examples are going to be about s uh, a separation of variables right otherwise this problem this method uh, will be really really complicated right so okay let me check if yeah this is done 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 and where should i go probably i start erasing this let me think um I, we will need basically from this point, we will just need all the time only these transformation equations, which we remember, and Hamilton Jacobi equation, which is easy to remember because we remember from the canonical transformation this. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can erase this. Erase that. So, separation of variables. So, basically, again, now it's a, uh, because the procedure now is clear, right? It's just a question of doing it. The only place which is like a black hole, black box, right? So, how to solve uh, these equations? How, to, how can we get from this point to this point? Right. So, here I jumped saying that, okay, after solving, we can, we can get that. But how can you solve it? So separation of variables, right? Separation, yeah. Okay, maybe I will emphasize in Hamilton, Jacobi, of course, equation. So basically now, Practical uh, questions, how can we solve that uh, differential equation? <clears throat> okay, and so let's start first with um, significant level of simplification by assuming. We can get significant level of simplification by assuming. What if, what if our Hamiltonian, so let's say you have the problem, you wrote down the Hamiltonian, right? And when you look at the Hamiltonian, let's say there is no explicit 
time dependence? What if time is cyclic? What can we get in that case? And most of the problems uh, which we're going to discuss, uh, Hamiltonians are going to be time independent. Right? Okay, so first, and this will be uh, kind of the subsection separation of time. Let me put this way, separation of time. Right. So what if, uh, uh, if uh, T is not explicitly present in H. Not explicitly present in H. So basically, I can write that H yeah, is not a function of uh, time. Right. Okay, so now uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation. Let's write it down. So it will be Hamiltonian, which is a function of uh, Q's, QI. Then uh, partial derivatives, instead of P, we write partial derivatives of the Hamilton's principal function with respect to uh, QI. Uh, then, and time dependence is missing. So let me cross it out. And plus partial derivative of S with respect to time. Right? Basically, it's a Hamilton Jacobi equation. Partial derivative of S with respect to time and equals to zero. So that's what, what, that's what uh, we are uh, supposed to have. Okay, and you remember like all the time when you separate variables, you said at uh, this point you, you're supposed to say, let's search for a solution, and solution is S, in a certain form, and then you'd grab that uh, candidate and shove it in, into your equation and see if you, if you can actually separate them, right? So that's how it works, and that's uh, what you did in quantum mechanics when you were, okay, you, you will did when you are going to solve um, Hamiltonian uh, to describe uh, hydrogen atom, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, let me write, so let's search for a solution. Let's search for a solution in this form in a form all right so uh, again solution is s which is the function of uh, q uh, then yeah q uh, time and uh, constants constants will be later constants will be later right so it will be uh, w it's a function which depends only on coordinates q1 q2 and so on all the way to qn and uh, let's assume that some there is a, some function let's call it s2 which is the function of time only again it's not a crime if you say okay let's search for a solution in that unless or if you want to uh, if it works okay great Right, okay, so at this point, of course, we need to shove it back into the equation, of course, right? And as a result, you will end up H will be a function of QI. Uh, of course, dS over dQ will give us only dW, give us dW over dQ, dW over dQ. You know what? Whenever I pronounce dW, it reminds me a certain character. Right, you remember the cartoon on PBS author, right? <laughs> I see you started smiling, right? It's just when I was taking classical mechanics when I was a student, right? And I, we also had a class at 11, and I would usually I would usually have a breakfast, right? And I would turn on TV, and all the time at that time there was a uh, that cartoon author, right? And every time a hey, DW, that's a little girl character. <laughs> so now whenever I pronounce DW, immediately it creates those images in my brain, right? It's a really, really irreversible damage to my brain. PBS created, I need to sue them, right? <laughs> right, of course I'm joking, right? Um, so, DW, oh, damn it, it 
very, very strong associations, right? And then, of course, now instead of s, we will have s2, which is a function of time. Because, yeah, this will give us zero when you try to differentiate with respect to time. Plus a ds2 uh, with respect to time equals to zero. Okay, you know what? Just now, um, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Of course, you remember w depends on q, this depends on time. So now let's look carefully at this equation. So it's a this construction plus this construction must be equal to zero all the time. And this part depends on what? Only on coordinates, generalized coordinates. This part depends on time. There are no any generalized coordinates over here. So, and of course, this must be uh, true for any Qs, for any times. So let's look, for example, at this situation. What if I keep all Qs constant? and start playing with t. For example, let's say I start increasing t. Yeah, I cannot reduce t. I didn't create it. Uh, I haven't created a time machine, right? So I can only increase time, right? right. Uh, but in my gena imagination, of course, we can go back. All right, so if I start increasing time, so this term will start increasing. That stays constant. And how can you keep getting zeros? Impossible. All right. So it's only be correct when this is constant and that will be constant but with minus or that is uh, with plus and that is with minus right so uh, i can say as a result so um so it okay it depends on q's these uh depends on time only right so it can be true only when okay so let me say when this is equal which constant i use alpha naught okay equals to alpha naught and then of course this must be equal to minus alpha naught And so as a result, now uh, this, <laughs> the second part, give us an equation which can be easily solved and get the value of S2, which allows us to separate time. Only with that value of S2, uh, we can separate time. It works. So this attempt uh, to, find, to search for a solution in this form, it works. We can get uh, the expression for S2, right? So from here, uh, we can get that a partial derivative of S2 with respect to time equals to minus alpha naught. As a result, S2, which is a function of time, equals to minus alpha naught times t. Of course, at this point, you can start screaming, oh, what about the a constant of integration, blah, blah, constant of integration. You remember what we've done over here with that additive constant? You remember over here, right? Basically, we were discussing those additive constants which would appear from our equations like that. We, we can drop it because every time you will have to differentiate as function when you get it, right? But we're still on the way of getting function s. Right now, it's just a first step, right? And of course, you can get uh, plenty of those additive constants. Of course, you can trust them all. So that's why I'm not even writing it. All right, so as a result, we're getting the recipe. Right. Uh, so if you have Hamiltonian, you see that it doesn't have explicit time dependence. You can search immediately uh, for, solution, for a solution as, as W, which is called characteristic Hamilton's characteristic function speaking of uh, cult of Hamilton right you remember again again Hamilton's name here right, All right. Um, probably I should uh, write over here that now let me put semicolon so W is called Hamilton's characteristic function I forgot to mention it in the first place Hamilton's characteristic function Again, if you forget these names, it's not a big deal. But usually Hamilton's principal function, it gets stuck right to your head. Characteristic, yes, sometimes it can drift away, but it's not a big deal. As long as you, uh, as long as the procedure, uh, procedure is correct, right? 
naming, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now the recipe, as I said, if Hamilton doesn't depend uh, on time, recipe, all right? So in that case, uh, okay, maybe I'll write, if h is not a function of time, explicitly doesn't depend, then you can search for a solution immediately. Q uh, t and now alpha naught. So you see now we introduced the first constant alpha naught, right? We can write it as w of ui and minus alpha naught t. Some books, instead of alpha naught, they use E capital because quite often it's just a total mechanical energy, E. And some students, since they read uh, some other books, right, they also use E capital instead of alpha naught. And, but again, it's just a constant. The way you name it, it's, it's not a big deal. So that's the recipe. All right. And of course, how can you get W? from the rest so this is equals to this is equal to alpha naught and then uh, the rest of the equation will be still uh, needs to be solved for uh, w right. so and then of course i can show that now h uh, which is a function of q's um, dw very strong associations uh, qi where keep alpha naught Ah, yes, still on that side. Okay, equals to alpha naught. So that's the equation for W, right? So equation for the uh, characteristic function, Hamilton's characteristic function. But again, so number number of variables went down by one. So we uh, basically integrated over this ds over dt. All right, and we generated first constant of integration, but still we have to integrate over all the uh, integrate or over all these uh, derivatives. Right. So now uh, the next step. So it's the first step every time. Okay, let's assume that time is um, cyclic, and we've done this first step, and now let's continue from this point now this is our equation probably I should frame it with green so because now it's a intermediate result now next what if on top of the fact that t is uh, not explicitly present okay let me put a new bullet here and now let me put the second big bullet here right so now let me write that what if uh, time is separated and now moreover what if additionally what if by doing reasonably simple algebra okay calculus by moving some terms around by multiplying by some factors maybe by some variables right what if you can uh, filter out or separate everything related to for example q1 in one construction in one block for example let's say i'm talking about uh, spherical coordinates let's say right and let's say if you if you have equation hamilton the jacobi equation and you what if you move terms around right by multiplying dividing something and what if you manage to create for example on the right hand side uh, a block which depends only on phi that's what i'm talking about in this case i said what if it's a some uh, variable q1 and the rest of the variables will be, and everything related to those variables will be uh, on, for example, the other side of the equation. Right. So, um, let me write what I wrote in my notes. So, moreover, so uh, let's assume. Again, you see, uh, as a result, we're imposing lots of lots of limitations. So, this approach which we are developing uh, will be quite limited only for the cases when you can separate really separate variables if if this if 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 doesn't work don't work then of course all right uh, it will be uh, very very complicated to solve this hamilton jacobi equation right. so let's assume that um, uh, q1 
and and all this dw over dq1 dw over dq1 appear in the hamilton jacobi equation as a separate construction appear uh, as a separate construction so for example right in general so let's write again this is now equation now this is simplified uh, h and okay let me open square bracket uh, so now i will start with q2 because q1 will be isolated somewhere right q2 all the way to qn then again partial derivative i will start with q2 because partial derivative with respect to q1 will be isolated right and all the way to uh, partial derivative with respect to uh, q n and time already we took care of time so time is not here anymore and now that construction which depends only on q1 and the derivative uh, with respect to q1 okay in this case i didn't move to the other side but yeah i just put it underneath of h but anyway pretty much the same right equals to alpha naught so that's construction again assume that we managed to get this so that is the construction right. so now what next the same i can write let's search for a solution uh, in a certain form hoping that it will work so let's uh fill our hearts with hope and let me write down uh, for the uh, next candidate to solve but now of course for w right <clears throat> okay so now let's search for a solution in this form so now it's a hamilton's characteristic function which depends on uh first over here it depends on everything all variables and then let's say we have function w1 which depends only on q1 basically in an attempt to take care to take care of this construction right and then plus uh, w prime which will depend on the rest of the variables q2 and all the way to uh, qn Okay, so now uh, we just need to plug it into the equation like all the time during the separation of variables. <laughs> and as a result, I just have to rewrite this equation. But here, of course, I will have W prime, W prime, and here I will have W1. Lots of rewriting, but it's common in math, right? <laughs> okay, so I will just rewrite basically this uh, hamilton jacobi equation. Right. So it will be, depends on Q2 qn and then of course now i will have here w prime because w prime depends on this right and w1 depends on q1 of course w1 will be left only there w prime with respect to q2 and all the way to w prime with respect to qn and then our construction phi which is a function of q1 and dw1 with respect to q1 and uh, square bracket and equals to alpha naught <laughs> and now at this point of course we can start looking at this equation and analyze since the, it's like here very similar arguments this part this construction this part of the equation depends on q the rest of the q's and their der derivatives Okay, derivative, derivatives with respect to them. This part depends only on Q1 and, of course, derivative. Again, I can say, what if I, and again, all the time it must be equal to zero. So if I keep, for example, all those variables constant and start changing Q1, of course, the whole construction will be changing, but it is equal to zero, uh, equals to alpha constant. 
impossible. Of course, I can change uh, speculations, right? Again, it's only possible that this construction equals to constant when this structure is constant. And of course, that structure will be uh, constant, right? Okay, so as a result, <coughs> I can say that this must be constant. And since alpha naught has been used already, now let's call it alpha 1. Alpha 1. All right. Okay, so it must be constant. And of course, uh, that will give us an equation for uh, W1. So this will be an equation which can be solved for W1. Okay, yeah, I need to erase this. So it's at the very beginning when you go over this, it's, it sounds so complicated, so even confusing. When we start looking at examples, it's, it's everything, all the steps are obvious. Okay, not obvious, but um, completely reasonable, right? Logical, right? Again, and it's, it's a pure math usually, pure math. But every time I'm thinking about, should I skip this, should I skip it? And I cannot convince it. So uh, convince myself. Um, and I thought maybe I should start just with examples. No, I feel like it, it must be presented. Okay, so now uh, this equation uh, for, um, yeah, so it will be phi function of q1 and dw1 with respect to q1 equals to alpha 1. So this uh, can be solved. Usually it's not that complicated, but now we cannot get some recipe at this case, no. I will just say it uh, now, reasonably simple, and uh, we can solve it. We should be able to solve it for uh, W1. W1 as a function of uh, Q1, right? <laughs> so what else? Um, and of course, the rest, we still have plenty of uh, things to take care, but number of variables, smaller. So now it's the equation with a fewer number of variables. Right. So now we managed to uh, isolate t, take care of t, now q1, and so on. Now, uh, now the, the rest of, now w prime, of course, can be found from the rest of the equation. So it's from q2 all the way to uh, qn, then derivatives, w prime with respect to q2, and all the way w prime with respect to q n and time is out and now we have two constants and now i think i will just move alpha naught also inside of h right so why, why not so it will be uh so that we will have like a structure which i erased over here which i wrote at the very beginning so where where we have n plus one constants of integration so now we get the second constant of integration All right <clears throat> yeah so it will be now alpha naught and alpha one oh, no square bracket all right okay so uh just a second so let me grab my notes so it uh, move faster and equals to zero so now it's uh, um it has fewer variables so now it has uh fewer variables so it means that we are getting closer to the final form of the Hamilton's principal function. I hope you remember you still what we're searching for. We're searching for the Hamilton's principal function. So first we uh, separated time. So then we were searching for W at this point. So now we split W into W1 and W prime. So now we're searching for W prime and so on, right? Until you um, get rid of all variables, right? integrate over all of this dw over dq right. okay uh, so now sort of the final uh, step all right so if we if we can okay so let me write for my notes separate like this successively all these 
uh, variables. And then all coordinates. Then we will be able to get finally S. So if we can uh, separate successively uh, in this way, yeah, makes sense. In this way, uh, all coordinates, all coordinates, all old variables, right? So then at the end, uh, this W, do, 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 yeah, this W, and we started taking care of that. W, of course, will be equal to um, summation over all n's uh, W i's, which depends on Q i. So it will be just sum of this W1 first, the second step W2, then W3, and so on. And then you grab this W and shoved it into this pre pre previous step. And then, then it will go into the Hamilton's principal function. It will be uh, W, right? Ah, yeah, it's W primes. Oh, no, 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 primes, no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. It's a those Ws. And plus, oh, no, minus alpha, alpha, uh, not T, whereas my recipe are here. And then minus alpha, not T, so. So that's the uh, outline, right, of the uh, procedure. Basically, if all these uh, cues, all these cues are not cyclic, but if some of them are cyclic, this process will be somewhat simplified. So next class, we will start with um, that, uh, that, uh, that case. What if, uh, for example, one of these uh, cues are cyclic? What will be different in this, in this, in this step? Right. And again, for that particular case, we will be able to write down the recipe. So basically, it means that if you look at the Hamiltonian and you see, let's say, R is cyclic, it means that you will be able to, we would be able to use that recipe and um, simplify the equation immediately. Right. So that's what it, it will take maybe like uh, 10 minutes to take care of those at that cyclic situation. And after that, we will start looking at the examples.